All right, eighth graders, lesson 83, probability of dependent events. And uh, this is a little different. Uh, we did probability before, and let's say you had a, a coin. If you toss a coin and you got a heads on the first toss, then that's the first toss. Then on the second toss, you could get a heads again. And that means it's independent. It doesn't matter what you got on the first one. On the second one, you could still get the same thing. Uh, but we're going to look at uh, what are called dependent events. So here I've got a, a bag, and I'll put in a blue marble, and then I'll put in some green marbles over here. And so I ask and say, what is the probability that I'm going to pull a blue marble out of the bag. Well, I see there's a total of seven marbles. That's my denominator. It's one-seventh. So that's on the first one. And let's say I do get the blue marble out on the first one. Then what is the probability of pulling a blue marble out on the second one? Well, that's going to be zero out of six. It's impossible because I used it up. So in our first situation, you could get ahead every single time. You're not eliminating, you're not taking away that possibility. But in dependent events, we are taking away the possibility of getting an option um, or lessening the possibility of getting that option a second time because we, re we have removed something such as a marble from the bag. All right, let's look at example one here. Two 8th graders and one 7th grader want to go on the trip, but only two students will be selected. If their names are drawn at random, what is the probability that the two 8th graders will get to go? So in this situation, here we've got the little hat, and kids' names could be pulled out of it. Well, there are three kids. So on the first pull, you could get an 8th grader. You can get the other 8th grader, or you can get the 7th grader. Then, on the second pull, if you got the 8th grader first, you still could get another 8th grader, but you also might get the 7th grader, because those are the two options that were left. Again, if you got the 8th grader the first time, you could get the other 8th grader. So if you wanted to name this A... And this guy, B, you could get the B guy first and here get A. Or you could get the 7th grader. And if you got the 7th grader first, then you could get 8th grade A. Or you could get 8th grade letter B. So, again, they want to know, uh, what is the probability that two 8th graders will get to go? And we see that right here and right here. We want to know about those 8th graders. So what is the probability of getting two 8th graders? Well, that would be 2 sixths, which is reduced to 1 third. So the, the chance of getting two 8th graders, we would say, is 1 third, or 33 and a third percent. Now what we want to start doing, though, is we want to make you think of this mathematically so you don't have to draw those detailed things out. So we're going to draw, and we'll say uh, this is an 8th grader, this is an 8th grader, and this is a 7th grader. So we want you to think of what is the possibility of getting uh, two 8th graders. Well, the poss possibility of getting an 8th grader on the first pull is two-thirds. And let's say I did that. So I eliminate him. So I've gotten rid of an 8th grader. Now, what is the probability of getting an 8th grader again? It's 1 half. So the probability of the first, so the probability of the first one included all of these, whereas the probability of the second option only included these two because they were the ones that were left. So now if we multiply that, we get 2 over 6, which again equals 1 third. So it's the same answer as drawing it out, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to this. Can we think of the probabilities mathematically so that we can get to our answer very quickly? Okay. 
and these are some conditions okay they are dependent on what you pull out the first time okay so the selection of the first eighth grader and the second they're not independent events if you select one name it could affect what's going to happen next all right let's go to example two which is the uh the marble one can draw ourselves a little bag here just to just to have a little visual and let's see we've got two white marbles and three blue marbles and let's see we'll do gray here for the white ones all right so it's got two white marbles, three blue marbles. If two marbles are selected, what is the probability of selecting two blue marbles if they are selected A, with replacement, or B, without replacement? Okay, replacement means I put them back in. So that's what we're doing for option A. We're going to replace them. So I pull one out. What is the odds of pulling out a blue one on my first pull? Well, I see I've got a total of five, so it'll be my denominator, and there are three blues. So I've got three this and then if I replace it I put the blue marble back in the bag what is the probability of me getting a blue marble again and again it's going to be three fifths so I replaced it so it's nine twenty fifths that's the probability of getting two blue marbles with replacing them but example B says let's do it without replacement so in other words, once you pull it out, you can't put it back in, and it's going to change what it, what the problem is going to look like. So if we, again, the first one, the probability of pulling a blue one out is going to be three-fifths. But let's say we pull that blue one out. Now what is the probability of pulling out a blue one? Well, that's going to be two-fourths. Again, we multiply, and I get six-twentieths, which can be reduced to three-tenths. So what is the probability of getting two blues without replacement it's three tenths now what's interesting here again is let's compare these two fractions which one would be the better option well nine twenty fifths you know which one has a, a better chance of getting the two blues some kids are going to look at this problem and go oh three tenths because you know, three up here and this looks like a bigger number so this option must be an easier way to get a blue well let's actually test that and uh, we'll have to go up here. We need common denominators, 50. So that was times 2 here. So 9 times 2, that'll be 18. Compared to, and this to get to 50 will be 5. And this times 5 will be 15. So that goes up here. So which one has the better odds of getting two blues? The 18th, 50th, or 9 25 is a better option for getting the two blues. But in both situations, we figured out uh, with replacing over here and without replacing over here. So all we're doing is we're multiplying the two different fractions to solve these as opposed to drawing them out like we used to do. All right, that's it for today. You can get started on your lesson practice, eighth graders.